So I say on the website a few times just how easy it is to reprogram the firmware on the open altimeter. And I thought what I'd do is I'd make a quick video to prove that to you, to show you just how quick and simple it is. So I've got my open altimeter board. I've got the serial dongle, which we use to talk to the altimeter, and I've also got a little battery pack. Um, you could do this in situ in your glider, using your glider's power system, but to keep things neat, I'm just going to use a separate battery pack. To get started, we need to do two things. We need to download the Arduino software, so you can grab that from the Arduino website. There's a link to the Arduino website on the Open Altimeter site. I'm going to grab the Windows version. And also, you want to get the latest version of the Open Altimeter software from the Open Altimeter download site. Again, there's a link to this on the main Open Altimeter site, so I'm going to grab this latest version here. I've actually already downloaded those to my desktop just to save a bit of time, and in fact I've unzipped them both to the desktop just because the Arduino software takes a little while to unzip. Now, before I open the Arduino, it's important to plug the serial dongle in. You have to do this because otherwise the Arduino software won't recognize the, the serial dongle. And now when, when you plug it in for the first time, it should bring up a message. On Windows it appears in the, in the bottom right corner, I don't know about on other computers. And in that message it will tell you what COM port has been assigned to the dongle. It'll be something like COM5 or COM10. I know mine's COM10 and actually I didn't get a message because I've plugged it in before. But if it's the first time you plug it in, try, try and watch out for that message. It's, it's, it's not a disaster if you don't spot it, but, um, but it makes things easier if you do. Okay, so now I've got that plugged in, I can open up the Arduino software. So I go into the folder I unzipped and run arduino.exe. Like I say, this is for Windows, but you should be able to run this software on the Mac and also on Linux. Now, the Arduino software needs to be configured to work with the altimeter board. And there are two settings that we need to set up. First of all, we need to go Tools, Serial Port, and we need to tell it which COM port we're going to use. And so I know this is COM10, so I'll select com 10. It does no real harm if you if you don't know the number and you have to go through all of those and try them one by one, it just takes a little while. And the other thing we need to do is tell it what sort of board we're using. And now the Arduino software doesn't know about the open altimeter, but I've designed the altimeter to be compatible with a standard Arduino board. So if you go into tools oops, tools board and then select this one. Arduino Pro 3.3 volts, 8 megahertz with AT Mega 328. Like I say, I've designed the open altimeter to be compatible with that standard Arduino board. So that's the Arduino environment configured to talk to the board. So what we need to do now is open the firmware code. So I'll go File Open and I put it on my desktop. Here it is, firmware. And the file you want is firmware.pde. That's the main file for the firmware code. I'll close that down. Screen. And now the firmware's got a lot of files and they're listed along the top here. You can go and have a look at these. Almost all of them are just drivers for the various pieces of hardware on the Open Altimeter board. The two that you're probably going to be interested in first are the firmware PDE file itself, which is kind of the main program for the Altimeter. And then another file which I'm going to look at, and it's off my screen because it's not big enough, so I have to get it from this little menu. It's called config.h. And now config.h is the sort of settings file which configure the software. All of, the, all of the options that you can choose are stored in config.h. And now this board, the particular option I need to check, this board I'm going to use by plugging directly into a receiver and powering it from the NIM pack. That's also powering the receiver. And so I need to make sure that I've told the software that I'm going to use a NIM battery. So here we go, this is the line that I'm looking for. Define battery NIM. So I'm just going to make sure that's right, because if I don't, then the low voltage alarm won't work properly if it's expecting a light bulb. Okay, so that's okay. So I just plug it into the serial dongle, make sure you get it the right way up, and then plug it into the battery. And now when I plug it into the battery, the board will boot up as usual, and you'll hear the little beep that it makes when it's finished booting. And so all we do now is just hit this upload button in the Arduino software. So if I hit that, so what you'll f see is first of all the hard drive light on my computer's flashing. It's compiling the code, and as soon as this message at the bottom appears, it's done all of the compilation, it's turned all of that source code into um, object code. And you can see the lights on the serial dongle are flashing now. That's the Arduino software uploading that object code onto the chip and it's reprogramming the flash memory on the microcontroller. So this all happens completely automatically. It's stopped flashing now. And there we go, it's finished booting. So that's just booted with the new code that I've 
that I've installed on it there. And so it really is that simple. I just download those two pieces of software, get the settings right, load up the firmware and hit upload, and it'll do everything automatically. Compile that code, upload it to the board, and reboot the board, and run the new code. Okay, so that's, that's how simple it is to upload the standard version of the code. But what I thought it might be nice to look at is what does it take to make a simple modification to the code? You know, let's just, let's just make a, a sort of simple tweak. And so what I'm going to do is, you know when it starts up it makes that kind of beep noise. When I was a kid I was a real big fan of Airwolf and I thought what would be a nice example would be could we make it so that when it starts up it plays the Airwolf music instead of that sort of annoying beep noise? And we can. And so what I've done, I've cheated. I've already been on the internet and looked up the, the notes that make up the Airwolf tune and I've written them down in a file just so you don't have to watch me type all of this in. So let me just copy those notes out and we'll, we'll have a look where they go. And I'll go back into my Arduino program. And in this config.h file that we looked at already, if we go down to the bottom, you see here there's a line that says define startup tune and then it's got a list of notes and it go, the, the format is note and then how long you want that note to play for. And so the standard startup tune is just a, a rising scale like this. So I'm going to replace that line with the tune that I worked out before. And so it's the same format, it's a note and then a duration, a note and then a duration, but it's a different sequence of notes. And then hopefully it should just be as simple as pressing upload like that. And so again you'll see my hard drive like flashes on and off a bit and there we go we get the message which indicates that the firmware is finished compiling the new firmware with the new tune it's, it's really that easy and again the lights are flashing on the board now so we need to wait a few seconds while uh, the new firmware is uploaded to the board so it's finished uploading you can actually if you look carefully at the lights it's now verifying that the firmware was uploaded correctly it always checks to make sure it's not made a mistake and now it's booting so hopefully fingers crossed cool I think that's pretty excellent. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's really how easy it is, <clears throat> starting from scratch, to set yourself up to change the firmware code. And that was a very simple change, of course, but, you know, start with a simple change, play around in config, change the beeping, change the tunes, and then when you get a bit more confident and you understand how the system works, you can look into the firmware file and start making real changes to the way that the altimeter works. <laughs>